Hi guys, welcome back to the shop. Hey, we're going to jump back on the TC125 today. I've got a surprise. We've got our chrome back. So let's go take a look at it. There you go in all its shiny glory. Lots of chrome. Not everything was sent off. A lot of it's pretty good to start with. Uh, I'm sure that this uh, re-chrome stuff will make what we thought was in pretty good shape look pretty bad. But it is what it is and today we're going to start uh, assembling the forks and the rear shocks and maybe get the, uh, the headlight the headlight bucket and the front fender on. I don't know. We'll we'll see what we can do. But right now we're just going to start with the forks and go from there. All right, let's get the seals in the uh, re-chromed nut assemblies. I'm over here at the little Dake press here. Put a little piece of rubber down there to protect the the new chrome and I just put a little bit of oil fork oil on the outside of that seal not a lot just enough to slicken it up a little bit so we get a, a good press here and Got a little gizmo here that uh, fits that seal just right. And I think I've got to get something else to to get it in the rest of the way. Like a little socket here, I'll finish the job. There, all the way down. Now, I don't think I went over this when I got these new tubes in. Uh, if you remember right, we had these made by uh, forking by Frank <coughs> and you have to change over this part of the slider right here and you have to use the snap ring off of your old one so they give you everything it's already pre-drilled they give you uh, these little rivets to put in there and you lock tight them in and you just spread the ring slide it over before you put that on is a good idea so anyway if you ever have any made, then you uh, you will have to make that change. Now, I've got the the new the new fork uh, lower here in the vise, and I've got it padded so we can protect the chrome. <clears throat> and one thing that I did run into was there was uh, some chrome flashing probably kind of over uh, I'm not sure what they do whether they tape this off or what when they chrome it but there was uh, some some something of the chrome that was hanging over the edge here and would not allow the nut to go on so I've seen this in other things where you have chrome done and especially in threaded areas a lot of times they don't uh, they don't get that covered quite right and you end up with a problem so I probably just spent about a half hour uh, I taped all the way around here with uh, masking tape and then took a file and went around here and just filed 
this excess that was on it. It was just on this one tube. The other one was okay. <clears throat> so you want to remember to put your your plug in the bottom and there's an o-ring on that so make sure that you've got that in and we want to make sure these are tight so they're not going to fall out on us and the first thing we've got to do here is to put our slider on our new tube and just kind of lubricate the the bottom here I've just got some fork oil here that I'm just going to put a little air on the bottom and uh, then a little bit on the inside slider here so as hopefully we don't scratch the the forks <clears throat> and also Put a little on the outside so it'll help it go into here too. And remember that you have an o-ring up inside here too that's gonna that seals between here and the nut so make sure you've got that in or you're gonna end up with a leak. All right here we go. Well, that's pretty tight. Once it gets in there, it should be all right. And our slider. Well, that one's tight too. Good on this. I think I'm going to have to do some clearancing here. Hi guys. Uh, it's the next day. Had a lot of drawbacks or problems with uh, the video yesterday on the forks. Uh, number one, we had uh, had some threads here that didn't get covered up when they chromed them, and I had to go in and, and hand file that stuff to get it back to where I could screw the nut on all the way. And then after I accomplished that, after about a half hour, and it was just on one, it wasn't on both of them. Uh, I started to assemble them and I had trouble getting the, the upper tube in and I should have just stopped there but I went ahead and put the upper tube in and then put the, the slider down and the slider wouldn't go into here either. So I removed everything and what, what they did I think, I, you know I don't know anything about chrome plating but uh, other than it's expensive is that they must have not uh, sealed off this area right here and I think you can see and I'm hoping you can see see it's still kind of shiny in there only uh, oh about an inch down and that was the problem. So there was some chrome plating in here. So I had to go in with sandpaper and remove that. And then, of course, that meant there was sand and debris down inside the tube. And I also looked in there, uh, and there was uh, surface rust in there. I assume from the chemicals that they used to chrome. So I put some uh, uh, rust remover inside of and let it soak overnight. And 
went ahead and rinsed everything out good and I I think we're ready to go but uh, that's what I thought yesterday after I cleaned the threads so chrome plating has some problems and I guess it just depends on how conscientious your chrome plater is uh, they did know not to you know to to cover up the threads anyway but they did mess that up a little bit anyhow I'm not gonna harp on them they really they did a good job for what I see uh, I just got a few little things that I've got to fix so I've been sitting here looking at it having a cup of coffee and uh, yesterday I felt more like a drink but I think we're good to go so we're gonna try to put the forks together again so let's go to the other side and get to it okay I've got all the parts laid out here I think everything is ready to go give me a little bit of fork oil here so I can lube things as I go together okay everything's going to go in pretty much the top here so that's where I'll get you okay try this again and we'll just lubricate a little bit of the, the lower slider here for the upper tube and we'll put a little bit inside too and on the threads okay that's good so far and we'll get our slider and lubricate everything on it these are still tight they they're even tight on a on one that hadn't been molested <clears throat> but we went in All right, and then we've got the the new the nut which they also chromed and don't forget to put a little oil in there and I think I mentioned yesterday about the o-ring on the inside make sure that you have that in there and it's uh, lubricated also okay and then carefully we're going to get the, the seal in there I think I'm going to have to get up there where I can see it okay you see what I've done here is I put a plastic bag over the top of uh, the tube to protect the seal it's a pretty tight fitting seal and I didn't want to damage it <laughs> now I've got the the uh, plastic in there let me pull that out but you just got to do whatever you can do to, to keep from tearing things up I noticed those seals fit pretty tight so it should leak that's for sure okay so far so good now we're down against the the o-ring I can feel it Get our strap wrench. I think I got to go the other way though. Well, that's loosening, so I was right. Yeah, there it goes. these don't have to be really tight so 
that's that's the end of the road you know I don't think my strap wrench is holding very good there all right like I say they don't need to be super tight Okay, I'm going to have to get either this down or you up so you can see a little bit more here. Okay, we've got the long spring. And then we've got the, uh, the little piece that goes between the two springs. Hopefully it falls down in there correctly. But it didn't. I don't think it is now. And the, the little short spring, and then we've got a spacer that goes on top, kind of a centering deal, and let me get this uh, wiper on before I go too far. And of course, I probably should put a little oil on that too. Just sparingly. And these have got the little adjustable nut on top. Again, we'll put some oil on the threads and on the O-ring. We've got the spacer. Okay guys, the uh, spacer and washer will no longer fit the tubes. This is another problem we're having. Evidently the inside part of the, uh, of the new tubes are a different size. So this will not go in there and this will not go in there. So my fix is to turn one out of aluminum that incorporates this. Uh, otherwise, it'll have a little nub on the end of it here that'll center it. And then the little metal pellet will go on top for the adjustable forks. But uh, it's just another in the series of problems here. But again, the lathe saves the day so let me get on with making another uh, spacer I've got one done I'm just turning down the inside this is what's going to center the spring just a little knob here We'll discuss a little bit more about these type issues 
uh, when I get done with this. Okay, here was the issue. Um, this, the springs go in there fine. The adapter that goes between the two springs goes in fine. It's this piece that is bigger than the springs. See, it's, you're supposed to have this go on there and then this. Those won't go in there. They're just large enough that they won't. So I went over to the lathe, made two out of aluminum with this adapter on the bottom to keep this centered. And then shouldn't have any problem with the wafer on top. Uh, that's where this hits. This is the adjustability of the fork. It goes onto that. Otherwise it, it wouldn't work with these. And the only reason I'm using it here is because I made these out of aluminum so that uh, there won't be wear there. So I think we're back up and running again. There's both of the spacers I built. The lathe saved the day again. Okay, back to this project. <coughs> and I'm going to get this pretty much... Uh, done where I can finish up the top of it, I think. Um, I just want to take a peek down inside. Yep, everything's looking good. I'm going to put the spacer in. You know, I don't know. Maybe that wafer ain't going to work because it goes down there past that too. Okay, the excitement never ends. So I had to cut down a, a wafer to go on the top because it does go into the smaller area of the tube. So there's our wafer. <clears throat> You know, just so it won't eat into the aluminum. And then, again, we'll prep this here with a little oil. 
We're trying to eliminate problems, but we have them anyway. Okay, let me find a wrench here. Okay, finally got one done. Of course, I do need to take that back off and put the oil in. Getting a little frustrated. It's all right. Okay, uh, the manual calls for 185 cc's. And this is going to be a slow pour because it's uh, it's got that solid spacer. It's going in, but it's also full of air in there too, so it's got to push the air up. You know, I I just hate to harp on things the way they are. Shouldn't even do it. But it's, it gets frustrating when nothing seems to go right. And, you know, it isn't just a bad day. But it's, you know, when others don't do their part and you paid them well to do it, that's, that bothers me. Well, I'll get the oil in. Okay, guys, going to show you a little bit of what we got going on here. It's just a just a bunch of bolts. I think everybody knows how to put the fender on, the forks on, and all that. So I just kind of uh, went ahead and and did some of this. Uh, just wanted to wanted to get it done after the the morning and the day I had yesterday. Uh, all the chrome really looks nice. It's just that uh, just had a lot of problems. Now the back fender's not re-chromed. It, it's in pretty good shape. It was a different one that I found for it. I probably should have got it re-chromed but it, uh, it would add quite a bit more to the expense. So I just did the, the really bad parts. But as you can see, everything's looking good. Forks all operate great. And uh, that was just kind of an ordeal. So this is where we're at. Uh, let me get back up to the bench here. Like I said, I, I'm a little frustrated with what has been going on here. It just kind of was snowballing. Uh, it all started on uh, Saturday. Uh, the carrier, um, the freight carrier, delivered the rechromed parts to the wrong house. And of course, it's a lot of money. I've been waiting on it since uh, October. And I get notified that uh, it's been delivered, but it's not at my place. So it, that kind of started there. And then I got to the, uh, I, I found it over at a neighbor's place. And everything was really looking good. And I started to assemble the forks and the those lower tubes, uh, the threads had had chrome on them. So I had to remove the chrome, which is really hard, 
and you had to be very careful so you didn't scratch any of the good stuff. And then I started putting them together as you saw and the uh, slider and the uh, lower fork tube wouldn't go into the uh, lower fork tube, I guess, the chrome part. So I found out that the chrome had, had built up inside there, so I had to remove that. And then I get the springs in, and the, uh, the spacer is too big to go in the tube. So that was from the people that made the fork tube. So instead of uh, sending them back to where I got them and sending all the chrome stuff back, the end user, me, I have to make everything fit and work. And that's just, that just was the last couple days for me. But anyhow, I think I'm, I'm, I think I'm past it. Uh, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. I think everything else is going pretty good. The, the shocks went on all right. Uh, I, I have noticed that some of the uh, uh, rubber parts that, that uh, assemble the headlight to the ears, none of that stuff is available. Even if you were to find it new, it would be probably cracked. So I've got to deal with old stuff, uh, try to recondition it the best I can, and, and inst reinstall it. I did get... Um, some good news, uh, my local man that does my uh, decals and stuff for me, he just called and said he's got the pattern made for the gas tank decals. He just had to order some of the vinyl, but everything is, uh, he's, he's got the pattern made, it's in the computer, so I'm going to go over and retrieve the tank and uh, repair it and paint it and then I'll take it back to him and let him put them on. Uh, <clears throat> everything, his computer will cut all the decals and everything so it should really look nice. Uh, that None of those are available right now and the other alternative is just to send it into Diablo and they'll probably do them for free but you've got to send the tank into Canada and then they've got to send it back to you. So that would be uh, quite an expense there. So this is, that was actually good news. So I'm going to go get that and uh, uh, get started on the tank. And I've, I've actually been working on a lot of the gas tanks and the other parts that I need to paint. So I'll show you a little bit of that in an upcoming video. Anyhow, thanks for going along on the ride. See you next video.